Zambia has in the past few years been experiencing diverse impacts of climate change. Some other effects include frequent and severe droughts, occasional dry spells, flash floods, and increased temperatures, especially in valley areas. These have affected natural resources and resulted in reduced food production, thereby making people and animals prone to starvation. Thus, planning for adaptation and implementation of climate change resilience projects in all parts of the country is critical in order to safeguard livelihoods, raise agricultural production, and boost food security. Hence, government, through the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience, PPCR, under the Directorate of Development Planning at the Ministry of National Development Planning is with support from cooperating partners implementing climate resilience programs in the country to mitigate climate change effects. The development objective of the PPCR is also to strengthen the country's institutional framework for climate resilience and improve the adaptive capacity of vulnerable communities in the Barose and Kafue sub basins. Therefore, PPCR with Climate Investment Fund and African Development Bank undertook a two days visit to Itejiteji and Mumba districts in Central Province to appreciate some of the programs running under the strengthening climate resilience in the Kafue Sub Basin Squika project, among them being the solar boreholes, goat rearing, agriculture, and the Kalomo. Dundumwezi Road. Mumba District was the first on the agenda. The team made its first stop at Tusekelele Women's Club in Shamenda Village, which has been empowered with a solar powered boho and a piggery. The whole essence of these projects, as you are aware, is to uh, mitigate on the climate effects that are being caused uh, by our people. So to have these projects, it will mean a lot of people within this surrounding, they will be very busy looking after these animals and also doing the gardening. Hence, uh, having no time to cut down the trees, which is bringing the climate change that is affecting us. Had it not been for this project this year, the level of um, desperation for drinking water, for watering livestock, would have been very high for our people. But even now, you hear from uh, the beneficiaries here, this particular bore is catering for uh, over a hundred households currently, uh, because it's also catering for neighboring villages. So every day here it's a hive of activity, cattle and people coming to draw water. So uh, don't think uh, we don't appreciate what we have been given, but when we say if there is any additional assistance that can come our uh, way. We've only done uh, two words out of 19 here in Mumbwa. You gave us an approval to do another word where we are uh, completing eight balls currently. But we still have um, 16 words that haven't been touched. Headman Henry Shamenda and Faith Shamenda are members of Tusekelele Women's Club. The next stop was at Mukangala Project in Shachishimba Village. The community here has also been given a solar powered boho and are now into irrigation.
In Pombo Village, the Evergreen Club is equally enjoying the benefits of having a solar-powered boho as the community can now grow tomatoes and vegetables. The club has also ventured in other economic activities such as rearing of sheep. Mu club, I think to the hobby dego mbelele hili tuwaka pegwa. Mbele tuwaka pegwa hili 20. Female they are like about 19. Then a bulu, wa mungu wa 20. But yomwe mpu ya yaga kwa kudairia. So we ije day 19. But yali mujolwe, imu yaga ya lawa last month. So ka gana ka ijisibo one month. Then you men that go back to pay boho, naturally mago ishumuri mawa na tomato. Then I'm up up with. So I'm going to watch it. So I'm going to watch it. But when you are going to be in change, you are going to be in some other. Yeah, you can bring. You can carry on. You can bring your side. 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 The team ended its tour of some of the Skrika projects in Mumba district with a call from the district commissioner to have more projects in the area in order to increase the number of beneficiaries. You have seen the projects that we have talked about. There are many and we want to ask if they can be more that can be uh, given to our district, we are ready. We have a working team that can uh, deliver to expectations. Uh, we are so thankful for this visit. Uh, it should not end here. The team then traveled to Itejiteji district to check on the 247 kilometers long Kalomo Dundumwezi Climate Resilience Road. I want to emphasize the fact that uh, uh, there's a big difference between this footpath and this road. So this is where we are coming from for the, uh, for the information of the people from the bank. You can see the difference. It was just a bush track all the way from Gom up to where we are. Then here, we turned to the left. This is still on link two. You will notice that we put this uh, road on a watershed. Uh, the water here will drain this side and this other side of the road. We chose this particular alignment because it offered advantages in terms of drainage, minimizing the number of drainage structures on the road, the amounts uh, of cuts and fields. So that's why we chose this alignment. So the livestock, <coughs> the movement of livestock, um, from southern province to central <coughs> province, it serves as a, as a shorter route than going through Lusaka, then uh, connect there. So even to the next market, uh, the Congo DRC for export, it serves as a shortcut. There's an average of about 1.8 meters in a stretch of uh, two kilometers. And you see there are five crossings, 1.5 meters by 1.5 Port of frames. Double. Yeah, double. Double channels. These, these, uh, these locations were not arrived through guesswork. We determined these lowest uh, positions using GPS. So we were shown the lowest points from the GPS. Then we said, oh, here we need the culvert. Here we need the channel, double channel, single channel. So the important thing here, in order for us to meet the climate, resilience was to raise the road. So it has passed uh, once rain season now. Mm -hmm. So we are passing to the second one. Yeah. Uh, again, as, as, as uh, our client said, the RDA said, as a team still on site, and even link four there uh, towards Fonton there, my team is currently working there to maintain the road. When the maintenance phase on this contract ends, we will gain another tractor to continue to retain maintenance. We as RDA, we supervise directly those uh, contractors with our regional offices. So in this case, this is uh, it's, it's managed by both Southern and Central Province. There's a section for the link, uh, link 3 and 4 in this days. It's managed by the uh, Central Region. 
and we have uh, this section, Link 1 and 2, up to Kalomo, managed by Southern Province. So we engage the dream maintenance contractors, lower grade. Usually, it's, it's for the lo local contractors. After having a clear understanding of the works and progress of the Kaloma Dudumwezi Road, the team met with Iteji Teji District Commissioner where discussions on the Skrika project were held. Zambia, and through the Ministry of National Development, it is imperative that what are the lessons that we made as a nation in movement with the Because it was a pilot, so what does that mean for the country? So it's been a from the lessons, it has told us that we, we, we need to, to re rethink our business as government, we need to rethink our business as private sector, we need to rethink the way we organize ourselves. If we are to be more successful, if climate change is not going to be the impact of us now, we are looking at scale, sustainability, how innovative can we be. That is what we had. But for colleagues who move, who traveled from Washington and also for, from AD who are rarely here, it was important that we take a snapshot of a few areas because they don't have the time to go everywhere we are, wherever we left our footprint, to see that. And the climate resilient road was picked as one of the sites they needed to see because this is a landmark for the country. It's, going to, it's informing government how are we going to do our roads from now going forward in the face of climate change. As climate change advances upon us, um, this building of the road and climate resilient mechanisms is quite a great example uh, of adapting to the circumstances and planning for the future, as well as the community development projects that are helping to um, uh, strengthen resilience uh, for vulnerable populations. Before the, the road, the link 4, we really had serious problems to take the inputs to our beloved farmers. I would want to give you one practical example. Uh, within Itejteji, there is a Mbila area, which is the bread, bas the bread basket for Itejteji, and that is at a distance of um, 70 kilometers. So we are able to go there during dry season and cover a distance of 70 kilometers. But when it rains, we would go through Lusaka. From Lusaka, we go to Choma. From Choma, then we could cover a thousand kilometers. So this time around, it is just a stone throw. We are there, and we have seen that the farmers are able to receive their farming input and also transport their livestock to the copper belt and to the other markets of the country. And before departure to Lusaka, both government and cooperating partners expressed satisfaction on how the projects have so far been implemented in the two districts. So far, the projects that we've seen uh, seem to be working very well. Uh, the project uh, seems to have uh, picked up pace. Remember, we saw some of the projects to do with uh, boreholes, and I think uh, those boreholes are indeed providing safe and cleaning water to the people, and uh, that is one of the aspirations that government has in terms of implementing the Southern National Development Plan under Pillar 4, want to have clean water and sanitation. Coming on here, I think the focus was mainly on the road. Definitely, you can see that the road is there, it's of a very good standard, uh, you can do very reasonable speed. Although we didn't find too much traffic, uh, we saw a lot of, uh, I think, tourists uh, coming onto the road. The council chairperson did say that uh, it now takes three and a half hours to drive from Itestesi into Livingstone, which I think is very remarkable. The scene has done so much. They have uh, constructed uh, roads to link the producers to the market and the farmers to, to the market. But I think there's a lot of uh, things to do in the future, like this one where we're standing here at the end of Link 4, and they want to build a bridge here, to construct a bridge that will link this um, area to Namwala and um, the bridge will actually improve economic growth in the country, spare um, a lot of uh, productivity and uh, livelihood for the people. So it's a big challenge, but I think it's a challenge that can be turned into a big opportunity. We are seeing that the communities are in the driver's seat. So they, they identify the issues, they identify the problems and the challenges, but they are also the one who identified the solutions and that's the beauty of the of this program 
they were able to mobilize the community to think about how they can address poverty and climate change challenges. The Vanga Pontoon links Itajiteji to Namwala district. On its way back to Lusaka, the team used the Itajiteji Namwala road via the Vanga Pontoon. This road was not part of the Skrika project, although its current state needs attention. The bad stretch is only 12 kilometers long, but it takes about 45 minutes to reach the Namwala Central Business District. Should the road be worked on, the time spent to cover the distance between Namwala and Itazuteja districts will considerably reduce. And so, the team used the Namwala Itezuteji Road in order for the cooperating partners to have a feel of the comfort and safety on the newly worked on Kaloma Dundumwezi Road and experience the discomfort of the bad Namwala Itezuteji stretch. To demonstrate government's commitment to the implementation of climate resilience programs, and having roads that can stand the test of time, President Ed Galungu recently commissioned the Kalomo Dundumwenzi Goma Itajiteji Road. The road we are commissioning today, the Kalomo Dundumwenzi Goma Itajiteji Road, has been constructed and rehabilitated using the revised construction guidelines, making it the first ever climate resilient travel road in the country. Climate resilient road. It is expected to withstand changing climatic conditions. This is a model road which will be replicated in other parts of the country, particularly in rural areas, due to its cost effectiveness compared to the traditional methods of road construction. This all-weather road covers a stretch of 247 kilometers, translating into US dollars 78,500 per kilometer. The road meets uh, climate resilient standards at the lowest rates per kilometer. If this model is replicated in other parts of the country, we will further advance your agenda of opening rural areas. This road is a gateway to the country as far as the southern route is concerned. Because very soon again, we will invite you to open or commission by next year June, the Kazungula Bridge. Your Excellence, the work that you are doing in this province are enormous. The cooperating partners were present to witness the commissioning of the road. By the end of the project in 2021, it is expected that uh, 1,200 micro projects would have been completed and would benefit 800,000 people. As we witness the successful launch of this 248 kilometers road, constructed in accordance with climate resilient design codes. We note that the road provides a model for possible replication in Zambia. The bank wishes to advise your government to consider replicating this model countrywide. The bank remains ready to support your government in mobilizing these resources.